Phantasm. Maximum Terror. Oh, that's your target audience, baby! Phantasm. And you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. Phantasm. Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Ah! Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Vincent West. If you will all pr please rise as I introduce my dear friend, the founder of Origin, my favorite guitarist, the legendary, the one and only Paul Ryan. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Happy to, happy to see you again, spend some time. Happy to be a part of the Fantastic Podcast. It's been a long time, and uh, I've got the special music playing for you. And uh, we're going to be talking about this new album, which is so good. And uh, Paul Ryan, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Uh, so tell me, first of all, real quick, before we dive right into this album, because I know you're on a limited time schedule, tell me what the recording process was like for this record. Uh, it, was, it was difficult. Um, uh because, A, uh, we don't, we have never went nine months, let alone 25 months of, of not being around each other or, or practicing or okay. playing a show or anything. Sure. Um, so we were all, you know, we all play. We all are, you know, love, love our instruments and love making music and practicing and stuff. But, um, you know, basically, uh, March of 2021, I started writing the album. And I said, I'm going to write a song per month. And I was, because I needed to have, I, I didn't know if the pandemic would be officially over or anything. I was just like, to have an album out by summer 2022. Right. And be in the studio by January. So, so January 2nd, uh, I flew to Kansas and we had about two weeks of rehearsal. Um, like we were putting the songs together uh, up until, you know, the, we don't know what the album's going to sound like it until it's turned in, you know what I mean? So, like, Absolutely. Uh, it was, it would, so, you know, A, getting us back in the shape of playing how we play, B, writing a new album and trying to make it, you know, like, I have an album, but it, the other guys make it origin, you know what I mean? And now sure. that Jason's been in the band for, he's the new guy, and he's been in the band for uh, over a decade now. Yep. And, uh, you know, Mike and John have been in the band over two decades. And this year, just July 4th, uh, it's our 25-year anniversary of being a band. That's when me and Jeremy Turner uh, had our first practice together. So, That's awesome. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a challenge. Um, and uh, well, I had fortune to jam with the guys that I, I do. And, you know, every time we're in there like this is the last one we're, we're done with this I hate doing this <laughs> but uh it gets a little stressful a little hot in there but we're, we're not done yet anyway. well we're glad you're <laughs> yeah I think oh, it was yeah, well, it... Well, well, yeah we went out and did like uh, six weeks or six to seven weeks on tour um, the album was only out the last two weeks of it, but we were playing tracks, you know, a couple of tracks from the new album, and now we're just waiting uh, the right tour to jump on and the right opportunity. Nice. And I missed that. I want to apologize again publicly for that. I uh, have not been to a concert since before the pandemic because of my health reasons, so... Definitely want to get out and see Origin. Everyone should go see Origin, and I apologize for you to that, sir, because I that was something I wanted to do. But everyone needs to be safe. It's uh, that's okay. Everyone needs to be safe. Getting up there in age, and I got to be careful. However, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite records that came out this year. Let's talk about Chaosmus, your new album. Oh, thank you. And tell me about track one, Echophagy. Uh, uh, it was probably about the seventh song written for the album. 
Okay. And uh, uh, basically, I pieced together everything in sinews and like, oh, this would work with this song. Or, but with that one, I was like, oh, that's that, that that's that's a juicy tidbit there. I think that's I kept thinking, I you know, I was like, I don't know if I have an opener yet. And like, I I was just like, ah, I think that's the riff. That's the opening riff of the album. That's the one I thought was the that had the gusto to be an origin opener. Um, basically, uh, basically, uh, it's a real fast ripper. Uh, comes out of the gate. Uh, unfortunately, we got denied using the opening sample. Um, uh, I love Mel Brooks, and with all respect to him, I don't know if Nuclear Blast wanted to do it, but we uh, used a sample from Spaceballs, and turn it in, and it was look for speed. No, <laughs> uh, but Nuclear Blast uh, turned it down, or they didn't want to go for the legal battle. So unfortunately, we didn't get to use that. Uh, uh, basically, and then it goes into like this kind of uh, very minor uh, ascending, kind of slower uh, twist and t- new turn in the origin kind of sound okay uh, so uh, t- we t- you know I try to make every album a little different so I tried to create some new twists on this album uh, now like, trying to with a, like a retro feel and a heavy slow drop to it so that's how I describe it at G, uh, to, to people who maybe who haven't heard it it's a burner it's a great way to kick the album off uh, track two yeah. tell us about the uh, title track of the album. Chaos Mos. Um, uh, I was looking uh, so the, you know, order and chaos in the universe is kind of like the basic term of Chaos Mos. And, okay. and, you know, I wanted something structured. Um, I felt it met the title of the album. Um, and it, you know it's structured yet chaotic, you know, catchy. Um, I was the album. I feel it's like really a, 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 maybe our catchiest. In my opinion, it's our catchiest album. Nice, but um, yeah, it's great. Uh, so kind of with a catchy verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, with a, a outro super heavy catchy outro for the slam kids you know what i mean yes the tentative name of it before uh, it was called chaos most was new shreds on the block because <laughs> um, the kids are like the shredding stuff and the slam breakdowns and so that's kind of like i mean i, I uh that's my oh to slam and i i you know my you know like if anything, like an ecophagy at the end, the, the outro riff on ecophagy, I, that'd be my ode to Camel Corpse, where this um, Chaos Mos um, would be my ode to like suffocation and dying fetus. Nice. Slam type parts. So there's a lot of um, tributes and odes to bands. I just want to go with something catchy and give a lot of variance in the album with different styles of different and influences and, and what I like about death metal currently and, and what I can do with it with origin. Yeah. And you put your own that's technical awesome. spin on it too, which is great. Yeah. That's what, that's what, that's what basically chaos most of it, That's the whole is, but be- yeah, that's, be- that's my take on it. It's beautiful. Now the next one's going to be fun for me to try to pronounce this with my Southern voice. It's a hard one. I'm going to, I'm going to do my best. Cogito Tommen non sum. Very close. I uh, I think therefore I am not, or it's like it's a play on I think therefore I am, or so it's like I don't think so therefore I am not. Okay. Um, uh, that was a Jason one. Um, I mean he wrote all the lyrics on this album. I usually have some play in it, and maybe I changed like. Four ways of structuring how something was presented on the album, just like four l- lyrical right. phrases. Or, you know, um, that might, but, well, maybe just 
just a little bit more than that, but I'll go into that in more detail. But uh, as of this point in the album, uh, this would be uh, still very uh, all Jason lyrically uh, and vocal pattern wise. Um, the only thing I think that anyone added to anything, my chorus came up with the vocal pattern on Ecophagy at the, on the that slower riff. Um, and then Jason went with that. But, okay, so then as far as musical influences, I would say this is a very origin origin influence track from the self-titled era. It's the next to last song written. Um, uh, so it's a shredder too. Yeah, I, it's uh, someone picked up on it uh, and said it's very vomit you out influenced, and they are correct. I was going for vomit you out, the self-titled type style of writing with the staccato, very drum oriented uh, uh, riffing and drum style playing. Uh, yeah, so that one's more like a, a ode to the old school self-titled early origin album. It is wonderful, just like the rest of this record. And now, uh, Panopictical? Panopictical. Whoops. Totally butchered that. Again, two tracks in a row, butchered uh, by Dr. West. It's uh, basically uh, the word, uh, uh, the lyrics are uh, are very deep. I, I know I know if I can explain it, but an optical was uh, a thing where, uh, it's, a, it's a think of visionary, uh, basically uh, a psychiatrist, I think, okay. came up with an idea for a prison that um, you're, you, that there's like a cylinder and then a cylinder, and you don't know, it's kind of like the idea of Big Brother, you don't know if you're being watched or not. So the idea is to, to be on your best behavior like Big Brother is watching. Right. And, it, and it's kind of a crazy concept. Um, and like, I, the opening riff is probably the oldest riff. I had that kind of sitting around for some time. Um, and then uh, and then I just couldn't create a song with it or it didn't come to me yet. So um, it was probably... Uh, the third or fourth song written. Some parts are sending together because I just I was trying to force making it out. But uh, sure, it's probably the most technical um, playing wise on the album. Uh, it's got lots of twists and turns, kind of like the idea of an optical, the whole terrifying Big Brother idea of like the you know Orwell nineteen eighty four kind of. You know, scary sure. philosophy, um, and uh, it, like I said, it's probably the most technical. Uh, there's one riff in there. Um, the bass line is pretty much the same as later. I instead of doing the kind of crazy tapping, shredding at the um, beginning, I come back to it, and I but I use it might explain the same kind of bass line, but I we call it the spicy meatball riff. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and it's got like an Italian kind of vibe in there towards the end of the song and then it goes back into one last crazy twisted turn um, but I feel like that's the most challenging as far as playing for the people that are wanting the you know the shreddy aspects of origin and the more flashy guitar playing you know like you know uh, echoes antithesis kind of crazy shred style. So that's another ode to origin, but a different era of origin. I feel like it maintains our, what some people, you know, some people want all shred and some people don't, you know what I mean? Sure. But I just try to give a variance in the album and I feel like that's, Panopical was the best title for that song. Have you played that one live? Not yet. There's definite plans to play a couple more. We only played uh, ecophagy and chaosmos on the oh okay because okay basically basically we started touring around May fifth and the album came out June third so 
the first two weeks, I think we were playing the Compagy and Chaosmos, and no one heard and heard these songs before. And then they released the Compagy, and then maybe two weeks later they released uh, Chaosmos, and then the day of the album come out, they released Coldscape, which we'll go into shortly. But yeah, so we were playing songs that no one had even heard before, so they were just taking it all in. But they're you know like, oh, I don't even want to do. This. Sure. It kind of slowed down momentum until the songs came out. So. Because people didn't know how to react to it. They just want to watch and listen. So. Well, wait a minute. That means I technically haven't missed this tour, then. I, well, uh, it's, technically, yeah. I mean, we could do more chaos. We only did 12 shows when the album was out. So there's talk of other tours. It just nothing has formed in shape yet. Well, I'm going to form my shape my butt to the thing and just figure out wearing me a mask and just tell people I'm vaxxed. I'm going to pull something off, Paul. You know I will. Um, that is my favorite track on the album, I think. Uh, and that's two in a row that uh, it's Dr. It's West it's could it's not it's pronounce. Shirtiest. What's that? That's the shreddiest one. Oh. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shredder, though. Lots of Paul shredding on it. Um, number five, Decolonizer. Okay, that one is one of the earlier tracks written, too. Uh, basically, I was listening. I'm, I'm still listening, and will always be listening to Entombed Clandestine and Napalm Dead and Army Corruption. Some of my favorite albums of all time. They're great. And bas- basically, you know, I was fortunate enough that we never toured with Napalm, but we uh, we in the late '90s we opened up for him and Jesse Pendado, rest in power. I think his birthday was just yesterday, but he's been passed away now for, oh man, like 15 years now. Yeah, so. it's sad. Anyway, I, got, I, I uh, my amp, um, I use a tube amp, and my amp popped a fuse or popped a tube, and Napalm was too first to watch us play, and Jesse came up to me and it's like, yo man, just use my amp, I want to see this shit. And I was like, wow, you know, wow, okay. <laughs> So anyway, and uh, and uh, so I got to see in tune about the clandestine tour, and so when I it's a good started one. writing the song, uh, and, and and we uh, I got to meet LG one last time, um, and in the tune AD, I want to say it was 2018 in France, we played a festival with the tune AD, and I got to uh, just. I didn't want to bother, but I just want to say hello to LG, say LG Petrov. Uh, um, anyway, so the album or the song, when I was writing it, I was calling it "Clandestine Corruption." Um, okay. It kind of, kind of the ode to the sound that you're kind of getting. Cause right. There's not much throwback to that uh, early '90s, you know. Before I tuned what like Death and Roll and Napalm, you know, that uh, the Harmony Corruption is a very different album by them. That's part of the structuring of songs, and I felt like Clandestine is such a cleverly written album. Um, uh, so basically, I was kind of going, you know, and then the LG passed, and then I was like, okay, I'm really going to do this. I'm going to really get my own, you know, to, uh, to Entombed in this one, and Napalm as well. So that's kind of a combination of those two bands, kind of Harmony Corruption meets Clandestine. Sure. And uh, just became like uh, an epic song uh, with lots of twists and turns. I was trying to write like an old school vibe and just a touch of blast beats, you know, because there wasn't a lot of as much blasting back then. Sure. Uh, so, and then I. Uh, I try to mimic a li- I, it's the only really true guitar solo there's like riff arps but I, the only true guitar solo on the album and uh, I uh, was trying to go with that old school vibe uh, I don't know who did what it was he lit or uh, oh gosh I can't think of his name right now oof uh, uh, who was doing the solo so I went at the first part I was trying to do like an tune sounding Nice. Solo and Napalm really didn't do that many solos. No. Like the 
it had, you know, like one or two in her whole discography. Right. Uh, maybe, if I can remember. Maybe five, you know what I mean? With all the different lineups and everything. So, you know. Sure. But uh, then I, I wanted to go with that early 90s vibe, and I'm probably one of my favorite lead guitar players uh, is James Murphy, who, you know, uh, he was a. He did Obituary, Cause of Death. He did Guest Appearance on Gorgas. He did Spiritual Healing. Dude, that it's, fucking uh, Cancer yeah. album he's on is ridiculous. Cancer, yeah. Uh, uh, fucking, you, you'll laugh at me for this, and at least our audience will. Testament Low, I love that record, the one that he played on, the first one yeah, he played he on. Was on. He was on yeah, Low and uh, the Dennis Gathering. I think he's on a. Incarnate. Oh, Disincarnate was great. Yeah, so Dreams of the Curing Guy. So he's like one of my favorite lead players of all time, and I just kind of mimicked his style on that. Okay. Did that early 90s death metal film and then uh, and then I put a, like a kind of a Paul Ryan-esque tappy sweet thing on there to kind of pollinate um, you know putting my origin stamp on it and then you know I had the opening riff and then the last riff is very name off they you know I was trying to make it blast beat blast out at the end sure get that more grindcore feel the early grindcore feel so and that's the colonizer uh how I would describe it. <laughs> it's amazing. It's an amazing track. I love the, the story behind it. It's an uh, amazing story as well. Uh, track six, Callscape. Uh, that was the last song written. Okay. Um, uh, I was alone on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and I was like, I made food for I made enchiladas for myself. Okay, and and, uh, and I was like, you know, man, you know, I couldn't see my family or whatever, you know. But uh, I was, I was like, F it, I'm gonna get wasted. Right, <laughs> and uh, I got completely hammered, and uh, and I was kind of messing around and I was in a silly mood I, I I was you know I tried to make myself in a good mood I went out uh, around the city a little bit and walked around got had a bottle and just had a Santa cap on <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody was out I was by myself pretty much on the streets okay. but anyway I came home and I kind of fucked around I was like oh man black metal Christmas so I started tinkering as a joke to make a black metal song, and I ended up uh, FaceTiming with someone very special to me uh, that made me really happy. And I was uh, in a jolly old mood. Awesome. Uh, and uh, that's how Coldscape started. And uh, basically, that's the only song that, okay, uh, Jason had like some ideas about vocals, and I kind of changed just some of the structuring on. The lyrical lyrics that he wrote on the opening phrase, and it pretty much comes out very black metal esque, uh, and uh, you know black metal Christmas. Sure. And uh, and it was a, it was a, ended up being a really super catchy song and a fun song for me because I, I I'm not the biggest I like mayhem I like some black metal but I'm not you know it, I'm not the biggest uh, black metal guy. Um, but uh, I'm saying here, my take, my my take, uh, Origins take on black metal, our closest thing to a black metal song that we ever did. It's perfect, and it's and it's a great track, and it's a burner too. So I love it. Uh, track seven, nostalgia for oblivion. Uh, that would be uh, okay. That would be the next to last track. Correct. Oh, okay. Oh, now, it's the next track on the album, too. Cool. Okay, so... Uh, so... Basically, I was sitting there, and I was pretty much, you know, during the pandemic, and alone all the time, and... Um, in a dark place, like we all were. You know what I mean? And, yes. Uh, and I was sitting there, and I was like... Uh, you know, like, I was listening to Slayer a lot. 
and I was listening to Bolt Thrower a lot, as I always do. Nice. <laughs> and I was like, it dawned on me, like, wow, oh, like, two of my favorite bands in existence are no more. They just, uh, Slayer walked away from it, and yep. Bolt Thrower kind of went, I mean, due to the death of their second drummer, I don't know the reasoning entirely, but they both just, they walked away and, and maybe, I mean, I don't even know if Bolter ever got the recognition they deserved, but they walked away from it. And I was Great like, band. Yeah, and I was trying to go with something with a different, darker mood, and I was thinking South of Heaven or like uh, Room 213, um, you know, by, about Dahmer, sure. like a darker type sound. And then uh, I wanted some epic, like heavy, you know, like when I took someone maybe hasn't heard death metal and they're like more like Black Sabbath or something, I, that's the first band I show most people that are my introduction to death metal. For some people, it's bold for like War Master. Or sure. Some, you know, just something that's not so over the top that you grab onto. I mean, it was over the top at the time, but comparably, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, it's just a lot. So anyway, it was just going with a different type of drum vibe, a different type of guitar vibe, a darker, you know, Slayer Bolter type vibe. And then, um, then I add the bit, the close neck, well, we repeat, but there's like a bridge in that album. It's the fastest part of our, uh, in the song. And it's very Dick Dale influenced. Um, nice. You know, who I did wipe out. I, I did. Think, I can't think of that one song. But he was like the original surf guitar player that's kind of invented the speed picking. Yep. You know, so it's got, uh, I put it like a creator type stream over that part and try to make it, you know, like a Dick Dale death metal riff. So you did it. Um, just, and you know, and he was an influence, you know, to my early guitar playing because my mom played drums. And it's like, oh, well, here's the fastest guitar player that I know of, you know, because you know, wipe out. And I can't think of that surf song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's got a very kind of like, Egyptian yeah. type, ethereal, like atmospheric kind of sound to it. So I tried to mimic that as well. So that's nostalgia for Oblivion. And Jason did a great job on mixing up the vocal patterns and like going fast on the slow part and just making it super crushingly heavy. I just, I really, I don't know if most origin fans are into it, but I feel like it would probably, some people that maybe are weary of origin, that would be a song I'd probably, a little simpler for them to grasp than a little darker theme. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Y'all should play that one live too. It'd be fun. There it is. I mean, it's it's throwing my two cents in. Uh, the final track of this masterpiece, "Heat Death." Yes, the first track written. Okay. Uh, uh, it just kept getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. <laughs> uh, it was like it started out. You're still there? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. It started out. Uh, it started out uh, as a four, maybe a three-minute song. And so, you know, like, it, that was what I started with in March. And then, like, I started on the next track. And then, you know, I practiced two tracks together. And then I threw in a third track. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I can have a nut. Here's a... But well, that riff doesn't work with that song two or song three. But, you know what? I might be able to attach that to song one. And then, you know, I can start writing song four and then song one. I was like, you know, how these riffs kept come in and it just wasn't working with certain songs I was like you know what that riff will work with song one and so at first it was like four minute banger then a five minute banger and then it was six minute banger and then it was seven minute banger and I think it actually got to about eight minutes all together and then um, eight minutes all together and then uh, everyone had written or played, did their vocals, and I did all my vocals, Jason's vocals were done, drums were all done, and basically the last thing I do is, um, 
I go in and make some harm, like maybe I add a guitar harmony or something and put the guitar solos on. Sure. But I felt like the the songs about the end of the universe, as far as like, uh, there comes a time where uh, all the molecules and protons and atoms, everything stops moving and stops having energy. So that's one uh, philosophy about the end of the universe uh, that we use. I thought it was an excellent closer, and I wanted to give kind of a dramatic outro. Sure. And so, so when the guys, well, first of all, no one knows what that album sounds like until it comes out because we don't even know. We put it, piece it all together and right. perform it live before it's done. And so, I enjoyed sending me and Rob Rebecca, the engineer, sent it in to the guys, and uh, unbeknown to them that that it was going to be an outro after the eight minute song, which. <laughs> I made up like the night before I think I tracked it. Nice. And I was just vibing. I just kept listening over and over in the, in the truck and driving and listening over and over. And then I uh, um, basically I just uh, I felt like it needed a dark closure to the album and like tried to make that sound of like supposedly if the universe was boiling. And coming to a point because it basically heats up to a certain point, you start spinning faster and faster, and then it's gone. Right. So that was my idea behind Heat Death as the closer to Chaos Mos. What about that track live? Any chance in hell of that? I, I would love to do it. Uh, I mean, we still got to, we're going to, you know, like, we'll have to discuss. I, I mean, I practiced the album in, in, its, in, in its entirety, so. I don't know how the other guys practice, but as of this point, um, I play to chaos most from start to finish, keep my chops up, and then every once in a while, I watch a YouTube video of some live performance, whether it be live in Tokyo or live somewhere. You know, like there's good, there's a good origin live in Tokyo that I like playing to because if we play. That would be the the hits, and uh, oh, nice. I always like performing live, uh, p- practicing live to the live videos. We play sure. a little bit faster than now, and it's kind of like how, you know I get you know we play three or four songs, and then I can take a drink of water or drink a beer, and then to my guitar while Jason's interacting with the crowd, and then you know so uh, you know I throw that in every once a week or two, just just to keep my chops up on the old songs. Well, it's a masterpiece. You've uh, knocked it out of the park. It's a, a great record. Thank you. Um, Chaos Mos is available now from Nuclear Blast Records. Uh, Paul, real quick, uh, what about the artwork for this record? Anything you'd like to say about the album artwork? I find it very interesting, as all your uh, artwork is. I uh, Triple Saints Designs, uh, and, uh, gosh, they're in Central America. Um, basically, I was looking, okay, so Chaos Mos, I was really sold on as a title while I was writing an album. I had some resistance against it, but I, um, I kept pushing. I was like, I, either you got to come up with something better or I'm not sold on it because I was really sold on that word. I want, I like to play on the word. I like what it meant. It was, you know. It hasn't been used before, per se, that often anywhere. Sure. Um, and so I was looking for something, and oddly enough, the, the orange type fire color, because we haven't used orange on an album cover before. And I was also looking for something that grabbed me. I think uh, some people wanted. Uh, an album title and then the art week based off the album title where I was like, I feel like I have the album title and uh, uh, I was looking for something that I thought represented the word. And I, I thought it was grabbing, it grabbed my attention, it was the right color, it was busy, it was chaotic, but yet, you know, uh, organized in some aspect. Sure. And I felt like it looked like it, it belong, like in our the origin discography, right. 
uh, visually and uh, turn that logo that John Zay created in 2009 that we've rarely used uh, throughout uh, our history. We put it on a couple t-shirts and it's even on our backdrop as like the double logo. But uh, so I was just, you know, trying to do something a little different and I felt like that was a good representation of uh, what the word and I thought it was striking and it looked good on a t-shirt so there you go it's a masterpiece uh, Chaos Mos is available now go see Origin buy merchandise from them and hail to Paul Ryan the guitar god and sir I thank you so much for taking the time to do this uh, it's an honor thank you for doing this yeah, yes thanks for it great to see you again I'm always a pleasure being on the Phantasm podcast I'm sure we'll do uh, uh, another one the next time we get to see each other in person, okay? I'm planning on it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Ryan has left the building. Chaos Mos is available now in uh, whatever digital fun format you want to buy that on. And I thank you so much for listening. Good night. Thanks for choosing Phantasm Podcast. This is Dr. Vincent West, Medical Doctor. Good night.